kicking in ah <laughs> nice to meet you mike um nice to glad meet to meet you face to face um i'm jacob hi jacob um i feel i know you well <laughs> yeah I'm, I'm, I'm actually had to be in my uh one office because the conference room has been used unfortunately we've only got very short time today and i don't mind rescheduling uh, for another day but if we can do it in 20 minutes 25 minutes that'd be great All and right? if and if need be we can do a part two so yeah, yeah that's right great yes so our first question we want to ask you um is what got you into animation and film um well, I was a, a writer and I was working in commercials and all the rest of it. And um, I would got remarried. I had a very young short term first marriage. And then Liz Young and myself got married and I inherited uh, two children. Uh, and I had two children of my own as well, Andrew and Rebecca. And then I got uh, Sarah, who's now second in command over at Disney Television and, uh, and Richard. And Richard was a little boy. He was only about two and a half, and I was new in his life. And he was a little bit afraid of the dark. And so uh, in the nighttime, I would take him to bed and and start to tell him stories. And one night, he wouldn't settle down at all. And I so I picked up this teddy bear, and I put a, a little I – was, I was washing up the tea dishes, believe it or not, and I had a tea towel in my hand. And I tied it around his neck, and I said, look, this teddy bear – He's also afraid of the dark, but when he whispers his secret magic word, he changes into Super Ted. And so night after night, I tell him Super Ted stories. And one day I went to the play school in the village in Wales where we lived. And the teacher said, oh, we love those Super Ted stories. And I said, how do you know about those? He said, we always stand Richard on the desk and he always tells us the story you told him last night. And so she said, you're a writer. Why don't you get them published? And so we did, and Super Ted books became massively uh, popular. And we um, uh, then um, a Welsh language television channel called S4C came along. And of course, 99% of what they produced would never be seen outside of Wales, especially in those days. Mm. And so they wanted to make one thing that would carry their logo around the world. And, and so we set up a studio, uh, uh, partnered up with some great animators, Dave Edwards, who's a great animation director, and Robin Lyon who's, um, and Roger Ficklin. And we we started um, Serial Animation. Um, and Serial went on to win uh, you know, British Academy Awards. We produced Shakespeare tales. We produced all sorts of stuff um, fundamentally. And, um, and uh, we never looked back. Um, back in those days, and you're looking at 40-something years ago, um, to sell to an American network or studio, like Universal Studios, et cetera, was, was very difficult for a company based in Wales. And so we sold up and we moved here and stupidly set up against Disney and all the big boys, you know. <laughs> but I found that you could run through their legs. You know, um, it, it's, I always say to Sarah, hey, if all the big hits come from the independent sector, okay, imagine mm -hmm. you two, you created this show and you go into Disney, you say, I got a great idea. It's about four turtles and they live in the sewers and you'd get your ass kicked out of there before you got any further with the comments, you know what I mean? <laughs> um, and, and, you know, you think of Peppa Pig and Bluey and, Paw Patrol and, uh, you know, uh, all the way back to the Smurfs and the Power Rangers and everything else. They they all came from independent studios. Pixar at its best was an independent studio. Um, they and bad. Yeah. Uh, and, and, you know, it, it, the, the bottom line is, is that sometimes as an independent, you get a lot more freedom and, you know, you, you can create stuff from scratch. Well, yeah. that question was from Rick Biotti. Um, next question. Uh, uh, can oh, I can you say oh, the next question? Oh yeah, you can say the next question. Give it away, Paul. Uh, yeah. Um, what is it like working with Lionsgate? With, with Lionsgate, well, Lionsgate is not known as an animation producer and studio. 
you know, they're a, a big independent. They're not one of the very top um, companies. And yet, on the other hand, you know, like us, they run through the legs of people producing stuff that sometimes the bigger studios wouldn't produce. They're a, it's like a mini major, whatever you want to call them. And uh, so um, there was a guy there called Ken Katsumoto, who was a big animation fan. And um, so while he was there, you know, we, um, you know, we, created uh, Normal and North, uh, which I'll say something about in a minute. And then they, uh, with the Hawaii brothers, they did Rock Dog and uh, they did a very big Rock Dog movie, which cost a lot of money. And so they wanted, what they found with Normal and the North, it was, it was very profitable. All I Want for Christmas is You with Mariah Carey and uh, Universal, that was very profitable. And because, look, if you produce, say, a thirty million dollar movie, which is still not like a hundred million, a hundred and fifty million, and then you put ten or twenty million of prints and ads with it, P and A, yeah, that means you need to take a hundred million dollars at the box office before you break even, and so, yeah, yeah. and if you're Disney, that's great, but if, uh, it's chicken feed. But for us as independents, we've found that if you produce um, at you know, a, a reasonable level, you, you get a reasonable quality. We're not writing home about um, Normal of the North or Rock Dog, but yeah. the fan base love it. Look, my two little grandkids who are in the next room here. They've come in from a, a gym next door and they, you know, they love Pokemon. Pokemon's not exactly the greatest animation in the world, but mm -hmm. uh, that all. <laughs> yeah, it's I get it. and, and we all wish we owned it. You know what I mean? Yeah. I was just going to say, what's famous to children is very different to what's famous to my demographic, and then what's famous to your demographic. You know, um, I, with my soccer team the other day, we were talking to them, and we said, uh, uh, how of you know who Brad Pitt is? No, they never heard of him. Paul McCartney, the Kardashians, they're all 10, 11 years old. And, you know, even Netflix made the mistake of going into sort of those sort of celebrities and they don't mean anything to kids. And you say, who's Charlie D'Amelio? And they all put their hands up, you know, because yeah. they all know she, she's on TikTok, you know. So, <laughs> yeah, like Eddie Vedder, Eddie Vedder right here yeah. <laughs> from Pearl Jam. That's right. You know? uh, yeah. And so just going to your question again, um, we found that working with Lionsgate um, was great because, again, they appreciated that we weren't spending $100 million or $50 million you know we spent 10 million dollars on on a movie and uh and you know the fan base of rock dog is nuts you know yeah. they, they you know yeah, what I mean? of course <laughs> we, we are part of the fan base we love yeah, rock right. dog. I, I, yeah i literally watched the movie when it was like uh 12 years old it was the first time when i watched the movie the first movie yeah and when i when i found out there was walking on second part i was like oh my god how is that possible and i was yeah, and yeah. then uh, thanks to the Rock Dog 2, I meet Jake, and he become my one of my best friends. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we've tried, you know, with the Hawaii brothers in China, uh, the problem has been it's much bigger than our us group here, is that USA and China don't have a actually great relationship, mm, yeah. you know, now. Yeah. And and uh, the Chinese really, they cut down on celebrity, you know, uh, internally, I mean, you know, mm -hmm. uh, they, uh, and so therefore it's been very hard. We've tried and tried, and I think Hawaii brothers want to do it, but we've tried to, to say, look, let's do a series now of rock dog. Okay. And that way, you know, but don't, don't get your hopes up because politics gets in the way as well. You know, yeah, uh, you yeah. Know, like a kid. That's story. Nice so back to Lionsgate, uh, you know, we've got a great relationship with them and uh, we hope that every now and then we'll do something with them. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's it's interesting because, uh, um, well, it's understandable to an um, independent company to make animation. It's not like the biggest studios like DreamWorks, Disney, not. It's understandable. Okay. But Norm of the North was like, mm, become famous because it was not a, a good movie. But that's understandable because imagine if you're uh, having a company that does not have too much money. You have to work with the money and trying to give a, a, a content for a specific audience. Yeah, get the most yeah. out of it. 
yeah yeah so so yeah you know and look uh you mentioned universal and uh illumination and dreamworks and uh but uh, you know the two big hits this year have been one from universal with mario brothers and yeah. the other one is um you know spider verse or spider-man and i think what's but the great thing about sony and what spider-man did they broke the mold they went back to cartoon artists to draw and design the characters and yeah. brought us back because cgi tends to everything looked the same you could put some characters from one movie to another movie and they'd fit right in wouldn't they you know you wouldn't notice they were out of place and so <laughs> you'll see now in the future going forward that um even the Disneys and such of this world, they will try and age up a bit. The Mario Brothers pulled in every demographic under the sun. Your granddad would probably go and watch. Yeah, you know yeah. what I mean. <laughs> so and kids. So so the the you know sometimes some of the movies that they make you know you know those two boys in the next room they don't even ask to go and see them, you know because mm. they're pretty cute looking and young looking and they they don't really interest them you know fundamentally hmm. go on next question all right um next question um so when you work with other animation studios like hb wink and uh, like those people um how do you work on a, an animated project do you work together on a scene or do you do separate scenes um we uh, i'm gonna be careful what i say here is that Basically, in this 20 mile radius where we are in LA, okay, the way they write time, direct time, draw storyboards and time animatics is still the best in the world. We've just made three seasons of Woody Woodpecker. And if you went to New York, you might lose something. You know what I mean? <laughs> and the further afield you go, the more you lose. Now, that you can sometimes the designs from overseas are great and sometimes uh, the animation quality can be great but it's that timing and energy that sometimes is lacking in some some of the stuff that comes from overseas so what we try to do we try to control the front end of production uh the writing you know the concept the writing the uh the, the direction and storyboard. No, the animation itself can be made, you know, wherever we can afford it, put it that as simply as that, you know, and lots of countries have subsidies, tax breaks, et cetera, et cetera. So, but in my view, and I'm a British guy living here for 30 something years, the fact is this is still culturally the center of the animation world. Yeah. Okay? Uh, yes. Uh, from overseas, you sometimes see great preschool shows, but how many six to 11 shows have you ever, except for Japan and Pokemon and a couple of things, almost none come from overseas. And the movies, you know, you see dozens and dozens of movies, but the, the four that were nominated for the Oscars were all basically American, you know, fundamentally. Mm -hmm. So we work with other studios uh, on production, uh, sometimes even post production, but but uh, we, we try and keep all the front end of production right here in, in LA. All right. Mm -hmm. all uh, right. That was from Rigby as well. Um, There's another question. Um, and I'm going to ask this question. And uh, since right now you know that me and Jake are working on the Rock the Goodbye game project, it's like an open world game based on, mm -hmm. on Rock Dog. So this question is, uh, how do you feel about being that there being a Rock Dog community and the Rock Dog video game project that we are working with Jake, me, and some other people? I think personally, I think it's a privilege. Okay, uh, the fact is that uh, to actually penetrate people and for them to you know really buy into a, a concept shows proof of concept in its uh, you know. Now, don't forget, you've got to get rights, you've got to do various things to be able to monetize them, etc. Um, but the bottom line is, is that, and it's not just you two, we get loads of fan base mail uh, about Rock Dog, okay? And uh, yeah, and you know, the, the two, uh, 
you know, non-theatrical versions of it. Again, they made it a certain sort of budget, etc. But the fact is, the fan base love them, and they accept the fact that you get some idiots who those. 45 year old guys who live in their mother's basements, you know, will say, Oh, it's not as good as Pixar. No, it's not as good as Pixar. <laughs> yeah, we, we don't claim it is either. You know, yeah. uh, uh, what's his name? Uh, Bud last year cost $200 million to produce, you know what I mean? Uh, whereas uh, Rocked Up was $7 million, you know, so you, you can't really. Uh, it's very funny in live action, you would never. If you made a five or six or seven million dollar movie in live action, you would never get compared to a two hundred million dollar movie. You know, mm -hmm. people understand independent movies in a certain sort of way, uh, but in animation, I'm afraid a lot of the um, you know people outside who don't understand the business they say, "Oh, you know, you mm -hmm. have to tell us it's not as good as Pixar. We we would we would die to be able to do something of that quality." Mm -hmm. So we are yeah. making. I do, I don't know if you two have seen the Meeps with Simon. For we've done a little thing called Meeps, and there's a song. Yeah, I sell it. Between Cabillion and YouTube, it's had over 100 million views in probably 60, 70 days, um, and it's going to be the beginning. We're going to do. It's again, it's a rock and roll band. Uh, the soft toys in this case, and uh, mm -hmm. in every show there'll be a hit song because Simon Fuller is the American Idol creator and the Spice Girls and uh, represents a lot of the big major, uh, David Beckham, all sorts of, uh, um, um, and he's a brilliant guy, dancing mm -hmm. shows, dancing with the stars, et cetera. And so, so fundamentally, um, um, you know, we're developing this with him and I think in the future you'll see another show that you will like. It looks youngish, but it's not. It's going to be like the Beatles, you know, the, the band on the run. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, that sort of uh, feel to the whole thing, you know, bad guy, uh, um, you know, agents and uh, all sorts yeah, of like... things in it. And, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Unfortunately, I, I, I'll have to finish very shortly. And I really don't mind doing a part two as soon as you like. And you, you, maybe you can get you get another your next group of sort of questions together. Uh, a few more minutes. So anything else? Um, well, now. Yeah. Well, um, yeah. let me ask that. Mm -hmm. So the last question is, um, I am uh, getting into uh, film and animation myself. Um, yes. Would it be a possible for us to meet one day in person? It would be a, a, an absolute pleasure. And uh, you, you we're an open sesame. Now, if you'd looked at my office now, it's all box, boxes packed up. We'd actually, after 15 years, move in the studio a few um, a mile or so up the road to a new facility. Uh, um, and uh, I'm going away this coming week, um, then coming back. And mm -hmm. um, we're moving right, when we get back, we've got to go to the UK uh, for a... Um, for a, with some of our grandchildren we've never been there before etc cetera, etc cetera. and uh so we go in there 10 days coming back and then we'll be moving the studio and look anytime you want to you know uh mm -hmm. great uh, yeah <laughs> so so look uh, look i know it's a bit of a rush but basically come out you know let's do this again yeah yeah. And uh, and maybe in the meantime, I could send you a few developments that we'll we've got going through the studio, and it, you may find them interesting and have a a few questions about those as well. And look up the Meeps on um, on YouTube. Yeah. Um, and have you seen our channel, Cabillion? Uh, I've you've sent me a few things about Cabillion. Um, yeah. Do I, you have Roku? Do you have Roku at home? Yeah, I do have Roku. I'll probably be getting the service. Go, go into Roku and put search Cabillion and you'll find it and you'll see even the making of the Meeps, which you'll enjoy, the background making, how the live action reference works and all the rest of it. And uh, and so next time around, you know, we can uh, cover some of that. i got to go because these two little boys are going to get the yeah. baseball. All, all right. right. The Meeps well, kind of reminds for, me of Scratch 21. <laughs> thank you for joining us so much. Uh, we'll have probably more Rock Dog questions and stuff next time. Plenty. Yes. Uh, Fire away. Uh, <laughs> Bye for now. All right. Have a good one. Goodbye. Bye. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Woo! We did it! Yeah, we did it. <laughs> All right. See ya, bro. See ya. Stay ultimate. <laughs> Stay ultimate.